Over the weekend, the New York Times reported on American military efforts to infiltrate the electric power grid of Russia, a largely civilian target. As John Yang tells us, it's a flashpoint in an emerging digital conflict. Judy, the Times reported that the president and Congress have given the Pentagon Cyber Command, which is based at Fort Meade in Maryland, the authority to conduct offensive operations without direct presidential approval. That means commanders there can operate more freely and, in theory, more nimbly. The intrusions into Russia's electrical grid are the latest reported example of U.S. military efforts on an increasingly crowded digital battlefield. For more on this, we're joined by R.P. Eddy. He's a former National Security Council official and the founder of Ergo, an intelligence consulting firm. Mr. Eddy, thank you very much for joining us. Can you give us some understanding or help us understand uh, of the scope of U.S. Uh, offensive cyber operation? Well, U.S. Cyber Command, which is the part of the U.S. government, the part, part of the Department of Defense that's intended to undertake our offensive defensive cyber operations is 10 years old, actually, this month. And it's a massive undertaking, um, meaning that this reporting, to me, isn't shockingly newsworthy because we've been working diligently spending billions of dollars to understand the vulnerability of our adversaries uh, around the globe for a decade at this point, at least. And before Cyber Command, of course, we were doing this in other guises. And how important is Cyber Command to U.S. military power? Think about how disruptive the use of cyber attacks against Facebook and other aspects of our cyber domain were in the 2016 elections. The way the world's turning right now, we live in an extraordinary connected world. We don't quite understand what would happen if the power went off, but if you some, spend some time thinking about no water, no hospitals, no ambulance, no traffic lights, what that all means, it means people dying. That's a cyber uh, offensive capacity. The critical infrastructure of most nations is controlled by things connected to the internet or to computers. That's a cyber target or vulnerability. So I'd say the capacity to create deterrence in the cyber domain is extremely important for the United States right now as we try to push deterrence around the globe. Is there a concern or is there a danger that what we view as deterrence, one side views as deterrence, the other side could see as provocation? Yeah, I like the way you put that. So one of the concerns about this entire domain is that it's still considered a secret, right? So all of our cyber offensive or other nation's cyber offensive capacities, if they even exist, are considered a covert capacity, meaning we're not sitting down in the public and talking about them. While nuclear weapons and, and, and normal missiles and other things are horrible weapons of war, we have treaties around them. We understand what is a proportional response, what is not. We've not had those conversations as it, when it comes to offensive cyber activity. So the capacity of one nation to misunderstand another, for one, capa one nation to think that a cyber intrusion or a cyber attack means one thing to them, it means something much more aggressive or offensive, could happen. So there could be a, a real room for miscommunication here. And so, in other words, it sounds like there, there are no sort of rules of the road here. It's a little bit uh, like the Wild West. It is, the Wild West is a really good analogy. There are no rules of the road. Uh, and remember, we're now talking about taking attack, attacks against noncombatants. So there are obviously rules of warfare about hitting noncombatants, but in the world of the cyber war, people may not consider that to be a, a, a violation of the International Criminal Court or other legal statutes that we have to follow inside the rules of warfare. So if I shut down the power grid in New York City, that will lead to the death of people that are noncombatants, and that is an offensive operation against noncombatants. And we haven't had those conversations. Uh, so it is, it is the Wild West. There's not enough conversation on this. The norms haven't been established. I, I would just say quickly, again, look back at how puzzled we all were about the manipulation of Facebook and other social media during the last election. The technology is far outpacing the diplomacy and the conversations around these issues. And giving the authority to, uh, to the Secretary of Defense, to the head of cyber, uh, of cyber Command, to carry these things out without direct presidential approval, without direct presidential authority, is this a sign? Uh, I mean, is this military commanders now calling it an airstrike? It's, it's now just another uh, uh, weapon in the arsenal? It is another weapon in the arsenal, and it's one that we haven't had real conversations about, as we mentioned before. To activate potential implants or to act, take advantage of cyber vulnerabilities would be an offensive operation of war uh, that would, is not delegated right now down to individual commanders. So I would be shocked if the head of cyber command believes right now he's allowed to press a button and deploy cyber weapons. I don't think that's where we are. And this all started, or at least the people first may have become aware of Stuxnet when the uh, uh, the National Security Agency launched this malware 
against the Iranian uh, nuclear program, which got out and was now being used by others or had been used by others. Is this now moving into the Pentagon? Is this uh, sort of an, an, another step, another uh, sort of Pandora's box being kicked open? So it's not entirely clear yet who was behind Stuxnet and all the reporting that the United States was on it is sort of non-verified reporting. Um, but whoever did release Stuxnet put a very, very powerful cyber weapon out into the wild. And criminals in, in other nation states have since taken that weapon and repurposed it for their own use. So much like a drone being shot down in a hostile country, American high-tech drone being shot down and being reprogrammed by the hostile nation, such can some of these cyber weapons be repurposed by, by uh, people we'd rather not have them, cyber criminals or adversary nations. That's another thing we have to make sure we're really thinking about when we catalog the unintended consequences of, of different cyber activities, cyber warfare activities. R.P. Eddy, a former National Security Council official. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, John.